My name is Mark McLaren. Even back in 2001 and certainly today, after my diagnosis, I went to the internet. And the internet uh, can be a place of great information. It can be also a place of great disinformation. People from the beginning want answers quickly and they want to make sure that it's reliable and that they have accurate information. And the challenge is to try to help patients to weed through all the potential information that's available and out there in order to come up with some answers that really are specific to them. We don't know what causes the vast majority of brain tumors. Uh, a handful of them have known causes but most of them are sporadic events. Brain tumors are like all other cancers in that they involve an uncontrolled proliferation of cells. In this case, cells that normally live in the brain or its coverings. They just grow in an uncontrolled way. They don't tend to spread to other parts of the body. They tend to create a problem within the head of the skull cavity. Brain tumors can arise in all parts of the brain or the surrounding tissues. And we have names for these according to where they arise. Gliomas are the most common primary brain tumor arising within the brain and they can arise at any part. Generally more common where the brain is most plentiful in amount. Another very common tumor as one becomes older is the meningioma that arises in the meninges covering the brain and the spinal cord. There are other specialized tumors that arise in other parts of the brain, including the ventricles, uh, which contain fluid within the brain. And very important and common cause of tumors overall in the adult are metastatic tumors from tumors elsewhere in the body. And these can develop in virtually any part of the brain. The most common and typical symptoms that patients present with, with a brain tumor include headaches, nausea, vomiting, or a specific area or pattern of weakness or new sensory symptoms. Another present, very common presenting symptom is a seizure uh, that brings a patient to urgent medical attention. So it's very common for a patient to receive the news that a newly identified mass was seen on imaging. And that can cause a lot of anxiety and worry, understandably. However, we, we as the physicians um, are looking and analyzing the entire breadth of the presentation and the information that we can gather to best go on to determine what the next best steps would be. Once you're referred to the Stanford uh, Brain Tumor Program, the first step will be a clinic consult. That entails a visit with physician or a series of physicians to determine the best care for you. During the clinic consult, we will obtain your history of the symptoms, what brought you to Stanford, what led to the MRI scan being obtained. We will also go through your, your past medical uh, history to see if there were any uh, pertinent uh, medical issues in the past that may be associated with this tumor that was recently diagnosed. We will also look through your social history, your family history, were there any genetic disorders that led to uh, this uh, tumor being discovered or, or, or growing. We will also conduct a, a very detailed neurologic exam to determine what findings we may have because not all the time does a patient appreciate the, the neurologic deficits. They may come in and say, I have headaches, and we may find out they have headaches plus a vision deficit. So it's very important to conduct a detailed neurologic exam. So at Stanford, we believe that the treatment of brain tumors involves a team effort. Uh, not only a surgeon, but sometimes we will involve the use of a radiation oncologist. And sometimes we'll involve the use of a neuro-oncologist. And we have a brain tumor board that meets every week where we go over cases like this and try to determine what is the optimal treatment for a patient. It is sometimes possible that the imaging that was done at a different facility may not include all of the sequences or pieces of the scan that we would like. And there are cases in which we'll have to repeat 
brain tumor imaging studies here at Stanford as well. Different types of imaging studies uh, can be used. The first type is a CAT scan, which is kind of the first step exam that we often do. It's done uh, often in the acute setting when the patient just had the, the first few symptoms from the brain tumor. And we, we do the CAT scan just to kind of get an idea of what's going on. Uh, where, you know, is there uh, a brain tumor? Where is it located? Did it bleed? That kind of things. And then typically the next set of exams that we get is an MRI scan where we can get much more information about the type of brain tumor, about its location, its relationship to important structures that the surgeon will need to know when they do their surgery. And we can also get some uh, what we call functional information about the tumor and the, the normal brain tissue around the tumor. So there are different imaging modalities that we use at Stanford that are not uh, necessarily used elsewhere. A few examples, so we obtain a type of test called, called functional MRI. So that's a type of test where we don't look at the structure of the brain, but we're able to look at the function of specific regions of the brain. And when a patient is about to undergo surgery for a brain tumor, it's of course very important to know where the tumor is, but it's also very important for the neurosurgeon to know where the, the important sites of the brain that are responsible of critical function are located with respect to the tumor, so that when they do the resection of the tumor, that they can make sure to spare those very a precious area of the brain. So typically with functional MRI, we can identify the region of the brain responsible for speech, for vision, for hearing. Perfusion MR imaging is another advanced imaging modality that we use routinely at Stanford. It's an imaging technique that allows us to characterize the way brain tumors receive their blood supply. And it's one of the elements that we use to distinguish different brain tumors from each other. Tratography, another way to use our MRI scanners. And when we do what we call DTI tractography, basically we look at white matter tracts in the brain. The white matter tracts are very important because they are the way our brain communicates the information to all our senses. That's a very important piece of information for the neurosurgeon when they are going to resect the brain tumor because of course they want to preserve that track as much as they can. We are, we are one of the few institutions in the United States that has what we call the PET MRI scanner. So it's a, a combined scanner where the patient gets at the same time the, the MRI scan, but at the same time we can get also that uh, PET information where we look more at the metabolism of the brain and of the brain tumor and it allows us to understand better how the, the brain tumors behave. Once we've uh, fully evaluated you and have all the details of your disease process and reviewed the uh, radiographic studies that are available, we will make a specific recommendation individualized to your case. So for patients who have either incidental tumors or small tumors um, that aren't growing, uh, we can do what's called watchful waiting. Basically there are risks and benefits to all of our treatments and if we think that there's not a huge benefit to taking out the tumor or treating the tumor, um, then we would just uh, continue to follow the patient with MRIs to make sure that it's not growing. Uh, if it does grow in the future, then we could treat it with one of the other two options at that point. Surgical resection is as it sounds. Um, it requires general anesthesia, an open surgery with neuroautologists and a neurosurgeon uh, with the goal of taking out as much of the tumor as safely possible. So radiation therapy is a way of using electromagnetic radiation, usually x-rays and sometimes other forms of radiation like protons, in order to kill tumor cells. So radiation therapy for uh, brain tumors and brain lesions um, usually involves what we call external beam radiation therapy or uh, stereotactic radiation treatments. Stereotactic uh, radiation or stereotactic radiosurgery is typically delivered in one to five sessions. And patients who have uh, smaller tumors typically can be amenable to this type of radiation treatment. After a neurosurgeon has able to confirm the diagnosis of a brain tumor, that's when we can then offer chemotherapy. Chemotherapy is usually partnered with radiation therapy and the length of treatment will be very specific to the individual patient and their specific um, diagnosis. 
The chemotherapy piece is typically an oral-based chemotherapy called temozolomide, but it can also vary. We have multiple clinical trials that can either take the part of some aspects of the standard therapy or layer on top of standard therapy. The benefits of a trial are that uh, these are often the newest forms of therapy and kind of the cutting edge new advances within the neuro-oncology world and we want to be able to offer that to our patients. In addition to their standard medical treatment, uh, we may also recommend it's some supportive therapies, including physical therapy and occupational therapy if the patient has some disabilities that we are trying to uh, improve. We also uh, may recommend uh, a nutrition consult. Patients are often uh, ill enough that uh, their nutrition is quite important in terms of allowing them to make a recovery. Uh, we also have brain tumor support groups available for patients that really feel that they need to learn more about their disease process and meet with others that are going through the same steps that they're going through. Patients often can be overwhelmed. Fortunately, the advances in treatment of brain tumors over the last few decades have made it a different story than it was decades ago. We now can successfully treat brain tumors with a, a high level of confidence and give patients their quality of life back. 16 years have passed and I get asked a lot of times, are you, are you happy with your choice? Are you happy with the treatment you made? And uh, my answer is absolutely. The tumor uh, is not only not grown, which is the goal of stereotactic radiosurgery, it has shrunk. It's been uh, really interesting to see all the advancements that are happening both in diagnostics as well as treatment. And the awareness of physicians to consider an acoustic aroma has improved greatly.